The most important measure of a battery is how much power it will deliver on a regular basis. That number is represented by watt hour or WH. Not amp hour or even milliamp hour that most marketing people like to write in the ads and on the products. That is only part of the answer. Also, remember that older types of batteries, like lead batteries, don't survive long if you use more than half of what they contain. Let's start by oversimplifying and looking at a battery like a box. You can add stuff like charging a battery, or you can take stuff out when you want to use it. Its capacity is its volume, which is equal to the length times the width times the depth. If any of these change, then the total volume will change. If we simplify battery capacity, we can use the same approach. You can see it has an energy box where the three important numbers can be seen as sides of a box. So we calculate the power capacity as volts times amps times hours equals capacity in watt hours. You can use the numbers printed on the battery to calculate a number for its capacity in watt hours if it's not already there. Most of the time, the amp and the hours have already been multiplied, so the equation is just volts times amp hour equals watt hours. That is often what you will find printed on a battery. Unfortunately, counting the battery capacity number this way is always too high because the reality is that the battery will always deliver less than this number for several reasons we will look at in the second half of the video. This is the number that the marketing department normally likes to print in the specifications because it sounds better than the number you get measuring the battery bank. So let's look at a more nuanced view of the battery. The first reason you don't get as much power is that the simplified calculation would suggest is that the voltage decreases as the battery is being emptied. This can be accounted for if we imagine the container not shaped like a box but more as a slanting wall. The volume or capacity will decrease. Due to this fact, the battery can deliver 10 to 25% less power than the simple estimation would suggest. A second reason you get less power is if the battery has to convert its internal voltage level to another that is expected outside. This is the case for all USB power banks that are typically 3 to 4 volts internally and have to boost the voltage to 5 or more which USB requires. This leads to yet more loss of 5 to 15 percent. A third reason for battery delivering less than expected is when they are working at a high dis discharge rate. Then the voltage drops even more than normally and the hard work of the battery causes them to lose energy as heat. In this case, it is not unusual that to get only 50% out of the battery with a risk of shutdown due to overheating. A fourth reason is aging or damaged batteries that do not have all their initial capacity left. When a battery can only reach 80% of the original capacity after fully charging a battery, it's considered spent. And you can assume that it will degrade fast after this point. The only reliable way to know how much capacity a battery has is to measure it. But that is for another video. For now, remember to find out the theoretical what our capacity and know that the reality will be lower. Here is an example of the capacity of two batteries. A cell phone, on average, has 10 watt hours. If we let a Lego block represent one watt hour, it looks like this. A Corentium power bank has a true measured output capacity of at least 65 watt hours when new. It looks like this. In marketing language, it would be called a 20,000 milliamp hour battery and the watt hour rating would be higher, but that number is not very useful unless you know how the rest of the battery performs. With the real watt hour capacity, we know that this battery will give this phone over, over six full recharges. 
That is accurate information. Check out the Current Home page for more about power banks and solar power.